do a serious one. Yeah, yeah. So joining you live from the World Championship 2023 in Barcelona, the Living Legend Podcast. Want to just start? We can. We can. I guess I'm. I'm the host. Yeah. Uh, it was supposed to be Bill, but yeah. you know, <laughs> he's uh climbing, yeah, climbing rocks and stuff. Um, he's climbing rocks and stuff. Yes, we, yeah. He's got too too busy for us. Too busy climbing rocks. Um, yeah. Yep. Bill uh, loves his rocks. Bill loves his rocks. Anyway, how's it going, everyone? And welcome back <laughs> to the Living Legends Podcast, your weekly Flesh and Blood podcast. Where we talk about all aspects of the Flesh and Blood trading card game. My name is Cal, also known as Red Zone Rogue, and I am joined this week only by my good friend, Az. Az, how oh, are yeah. you doing? Yeah, doing uh, doing really, really well. It's going to be a good episode today because we've got a lot of things to speak about out off the back of uh, Pro Tour Amsterdam. Um, with uh, uh, out of uh, out of left field for hero that won as well, uh, so that's interesting to, to to go into. But also a load of roadmap stuff as to what is coming up next with flesh and blood, some products, speculations as to what Brian said during the keynote, and uh, Rosetta stuff as well. So it's going to be a good little episode today, I think. Yeah, and before we get started, a couple quick notes. First of all. Uh, we want to mention that yeah. if you like the Living Legends podcast, definitely go follow us on our brand new YouTube channel, uh, The Living Legends, a flesh and blood TCG podcast, or youtube.com slash The Living Legends podcast. Uh, that is where all of the new episodes are going to be on YouTube in about a week or two. We're, this one is still going to be on Red Zone Rogue, and the next one is still going to be on Red Zone Rogue, but the one after that is going to be exclusively on the new YouTube channel. So definitely go check that out. Uh, help us speed run to 1000 subscribers over there. We know there's about like 700 of you who watch every or listen every single um, week on the audio yeah. only and about a thousand to 4000 or 5000, depending on how spicy the topic is here on here on YouTube. So definitely go check out that uh, new channel. That's where all of the living legend specific stuff is going to be uh, second note. Bill is not here today, as we may have alluded already. He is too preoccupied climbing walls. That's what he's doing. He's he's climbing you know, <laughs> he's got he's he's just gripping Bouldering. gripping those boulders with his Canadian fists. Um, <laughs> yeah, so spending too much money on banana like shoes. Uh, yeah. To, uh, to climb those rocks. I mean, I um, I delved into it a little bit, um, but um, for people that for people that don't know, I haven't really spoken about it much recently because uh, my exercise regime has gone down the drain in, in, over the last four weeks because I actually rolled my ankle during a football match. Oh damn! Ago. So it was um, it was the week before the UK Nats, and um, basically I put my foot on the ground, and then my foot just went like that. So it just it rolls your ankle. It popped a little bit. So yeah. it's definitely a sprain. Uh, and those things um, do take at least a month or so before you can really start doing exercise again. So uh, I've had to put bouldering on the back foot. So Bill's way ahead of me now. His skill level has far surpassed mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. so we'll, we'll ask Bill about all that stuff next week. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, for the time being, that's kind of our uh, housekeeping uh Go check out the new YouTube channel, and then Bill will be back with yep. us uh, next week. Uh, as 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 said, uh, we got a lot of stuff right. to talk about this week, so let's just get into our weeks. In before, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so but before before we go into that, I just want to shout out uh, a couple of people that are commenting on the new YouTube channel. So Goblin Reserve first of all says, any thought of re-uploading the older videos to this channel as well? Ooh. There is a playlist. Um. There is a plate because trying to upload all of the old videos to the new channel would take absolutely ages. Hank. It's like 107 um, episodes, 106 or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. But there is a playlist on there which links to the old. Um, well, not old yet. We're still migrating everything over. But there is a playlist on there of all the other episodes that we've done on uh, Red Zone Rogue channel. Uh, but yeah, going forward, they'll be uploaded on on both until we've migrated everything, everything over. Uh, another commenters as well. I just want to shout you out because you're the first commenters on the video. So Playtime TCG, Lieber Noodle, Jacob Neatling, uh, Florgness, 
Donzai, Banzai, and John Randall Dacklesun 9803. So thanks for all your comments on the first episode over on the new channel. Hell yeah. Uh, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, I'll continue to shout out names of people that comment on these uh, first opening episodes as we race towards our first 100 subscribers, 1,000. That would be great if we can get there. Um, and as, as you said, the, the, the numbers do justify it. It just means clicking that button, essentially, on the YouTube channel. Um, so go and do that when you can. But nearly at 100 already uh, within the first week, which is nice. Yes, so, yeah, we'll continue yes. to shout out, uh, shout out you folks as well that comment on the videos. So just thought I'd shout them out. Quickly. Join us. Be one of the first 1,000. You can only be one of the first 1,000 yeah. once, so go ahead and do it. And uh, like I said, definitely definitely check it out. Um, yeah, good yeah. idea. Good idea. Yeah, we'll, we'll shout out and mention some comments exclusively from, from the new channel uh, the next couple yeah. episodes. Um, awesome. Um, For sure. All right. Well, my week in Flesh and Blood is pretty, pretty quick because I didn't really do much in Flesh and Blood, personally speaking. I've been really, really busy and involved with a lot of other trading card games. Um, but I did end up watching the, the Pro Tour, and we'll talk about that when the time comes. Um, but I guess I can mention this now since it's kind of like more like a personal thing and less... Uh, well, it's, it's very much about the Pro Tour. But watching the finals yeah. of the Pro Tour was, was pretty awesome. Um, I have been oh, kind yeah. of checked out on the competitive scene for quite a while and I, I've, I've watched a couple of the other competitive stuff but for whatever reason maybe it's because of the hero that won i don't know um <laughs> but i really felt uh it felt really nice watching it and it felt kind of like i was back there um you know like in in the casting booth like in in the event uh and i even kind of like hype tweeted after um after shoma ended up winning and um yeah, I haven't done anything like that since I was like physically there. So it was cool. It was great. I uh, highly go recommend watching the the top eight. If not, you know, if you don't have the time, at least the top four. It, it's great. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, that is basically what I my, my week in Flesh and Blood has been mostly just like the pro tour. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, it was a lot of a lot of a lot of people's weeks in, in Fav was watching pro tour Amsterdam. Um, and yeah, great job to everybody who was there um, and uh, playing in the event and casting it and all this. It was it was great to watch. Production of, of course by Savage Feats was was solid again. Very very good stuff. Um, so yeah, good job to everybody there. Uh, and yeah, uh, Shoma for winning the whole event on Uzuri. Very very interesting pick. You know, I imagine if you go back Beast. to a few weeks ago um, and you know, watch lots of content creators tier lists on what heroes are going to be a tier and that Azuri will not be on there. So, well, <laughs> Azuri she... will not be on any tier list. <laughs> she would be on mine. Uh, Azuri has been my, oh, yeah. for, for multiple reasons, I should say. I mean, I'm the one who spoiled Azuri, but even if I didn't, she would still be my favorite hero. Azuri is like literally my favorite hero and my favorite deck in the entire game. It's the deck that I have mm -hmm. like 98% foiled. Um, Currently, I've, I've kind of like converted it over to new for a little while, but um, yeah. Uzuri's still there, and she's literally my my favorite deck. And so when I saw two Uzuris at the event, and then I saw the conversion rate into day two, both Uzuris made day two. I was like, hell yeah! I tweeted this. I was like, ba two based Uzuris, and then I saw like Shoma was en ended up winning, and I was just like, yo, I'm rooting for this guy. And then he just he just yeah. took it took it all away. Uh, so. Very excited for that. Yeah. Um, it was it very, was very interesting. Incredible. Very interesting pick. Very very interesting pick for the for the meta at large because <clears throat> a lot of people were thinking new because of the interaction. But what a lot of people forgot was that all of those stealth cards, like including your spoiler as well as like Bonds of Agony and stuff, or they're all stealth cards. So they still allow you to play and switch out things of into uh, into Azuri's ability, right? So it's just. There's so much forced interaction in that deck. It just they weren't allowing Zens to play. Like they weren't allowing Zens to keep full hands. They were picking car key cards out of their hands so they can't play them. When Zen was blocking to maybe go off or try and get tempo back, they were shredding things. So the block was useless. You know, yeah. there's loads of really interesting things in that Azuri deck, um, which surprised a lot of people, clearly. So Yeah, I mean deck list looks really good. I'm a big fan of it. Um, it looked pretty close. Spreading plagues, spreading plagues as well. Stuff that you've always used. Yeah, like <laughs> I said, I like... played against you, you're always like, "Yeah, spreading plague." I'm like, "Okay, yeah, this is a pet cow card, but you know, in Shoma's list, nonetheless." So, 
really interesting thing, really interesting stuff. Turns out I might have good taste in uh, heroes and cards. Um, yeah, no, the, yeah. the deck list looks great. It looks like something I would definitely run. I mean, I probably will run almost a, a variant of of it. In my current Uzuri list isn't updated with Mistvale, but like it's pretty pretty darn close to what to what he's running. I'm still running some of the older stuff like um, uh, like Ravenous Rabble and stuff. But you you swap those out for mm. some of the new cards. Uh, you have like Justin Nick. You have um, both of the the blue one drop uh, majestic stealth cards like uh, uh yeah. the, the prognosis and, and whatever um and yeah 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 i mean like just generally speaking uh uzuri she's my favorite deck but i really like her for like multiple reasons one of them she's cool i, I like the, the the flavor i like the assassin vibe i like her gameplay but two i think she's just generally pretty good against almost everyone except for with some exceptions uh those exceptions are classes that can go over the top of her interaction at instant speed so specifically like kano yeah. uh, it's really really hard for uzuri to deal with kano because kano can just do all of his stuff in response to you um yeah <coughs> pardon me bless you pardon me <laughs> Remember to edit that sneeze out. If it's not out, then shame on me for not editing it out. Um, nah, I'll leave it. It's fine. <laughs> but uh, maybe we'll leave it in. But um, yeah. yeah, so like, I, I really like Uzuri, and she's... I always feel like good playing against someone with, with Uzuri, except with Kano. Kano's really rough um, mm -hmm. because they can just kind of ignore your interaction for a large part, and they just burn you out and blow you up. Um, so... But that's the thing, right? Every hero has bad matchups, and I think um, a lot of people identify that you know, as long as you streamline your deck to focus on the meta, you know, clearly Shoma saw a weakness in the in the Zens, and even the news that he faced, you know, Azuri, Azur I think, does have more interaction than New, and doesn't have a density of non-blocks in their deck because all the assassin cards pretty much block for three, don't they? Most of them. Yeah, you don't all. run. Yeah, you you run like no instants. Um, yeah. Almost everything in the deck blocks for three, with the with a couple exceptions like your codexes and, and that kind of stuff. But for the most part, it's yeah. just pretty tanky, pretty resilient, great against almost every like physical deck in the entire game. Like it's just really solid. Most decks really want to have like a couple card hands, and they also want to have like you know some sort of like follow up. And so if you can do something like a shakedown or any 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 card that lets you like rip stuff out of your opponent's hand, especially if you get to choose. You can really pick apart your opponent's oh, yeah. turn and just make it so they can't do much, and you block really well, and it's just a great deck. Um, so, And there's a lot of information revealing as well, so you can see, yeah. you can, about, if you know the decks that you want to prey upon, you can be like, oh, okay, I'll take this card away, and they can only do this next turn, which means, you know, I've got this much life or cards to, to, to block with or, or keep for what I want to do next turn. And people like Shoma... Um, and I think Japanese players as well are going to see a lot. You know, they're very, very good, like across the board. They're they're very articulate with their cards, and you know, I think we're going to see a lot of decent Japanese players coming through. And the world should be scared <laughs> because they're oh, yeah. very good at yeah. card games. Um, so, um, so yeah, it's going to be. It's interesting as well that obviously uh, Japan was a big thing this year as well with part of the Misfail World Premiere. Um, so yeah, the world should definitely be scared of, of Japan coming, going forward. Um, but yeah, great, great mastery of the deck. And another thing that was interesting as well, seeing, um, the Azuri deck was, was how much, was how much, um, contracts mattered. There was a, there was a game where I think Shoma rebought his Black Tech Whisperers at least two times finals. in that game. The final man. Because like... he was, that's it. Was it the finals? Yeah. Yeah. Because he was banishing cards off of, off of Leave No Witnesses, wasn't it? I think. Yep. Because that's a contract card. So, you know, the black techs as well coming in really handy in that game, which was which was good to see because those cards are very good. And again, punishing non-blocks. If you don't block me, I'm going to crack my, bra my black techs there and then just play another card after this. Um, yeah, it's, so. it's one of the situations where it's it's like just really good either way. It's either you, you block me and you take cards out of your hand, which is what I want anyway, or you don't block me and I punch you even harder with more stuff. Um, yeah. that, that could also just potentially rip cards out of your hand anyway. Stuff like Surgical Extraction, yeah. like uh, the, the the Prognosis. Like, there's a bunch of stuff that just forces interaction. You either block it and get cards out of your hand, or I just force the cards out of your hand, and you also take damage. Um, it's great. That, I mean, that's yeah. I've, I've said it multiple times on the podcast. Just give me cards that let me take cards out of my opponent's hand. That's what I want. 
Um, yep, yep. It's, she's 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 solid, great. Solid strategy this weekend, clearly. Um, but um, but yeah, so a lot of people were glued to the glued to the TVs uh, for uh, for Pro Tour, which I was definitely one of them as well. Uh, while working, I, I might add, just headphones in, listening to the casters, uh, following along that way. Um, but apart from that, my my week in Flesh and Blood was uh, revealing the Azalea Armory deck, which I have now uh, done. And I've actually got the product here as well. So you can see it there. Ooh. Uh, the Azalea Armory deck. Um, so this is the one I'm going to be giving away. So people that are watching this now in the future, um, you still have time. Uh, so I'm, I'm drawing it on the 2nd of August. So when this goes live, you will still have two days or one day to enter. So all you need to do is comment on the, the Azalea Armory, Armory deck decklist video uh, saying why you love the hero and when or if you're going to start playing Flesh and Blood soon. And then just like and subscribe to my channel. And then you've got a chance of chance of winning it still. Uh, so you've still got time if you're watching or listening to this to do it. Uh, but you should also like and subscribe to this channel as well, Living Legends Podcast. Um, that's what you should also do. Yes. Um, but yeah, I've been doing that. So that so that so that was good. Um, and um, the the cards that came in the Azalea deck as well are pretty cool. So you got the Azalea Hero token, which is here. You've also got this little thing on the back which says arrows. So you got a nice little prompt on the back oh, of the Azalea card, which, which says um, arrows can only be played from Arsenal. And then all the equipments come in rainbow foil. So all the equipments that you get from the armory deck come in rainbow foil, as well as well as one liner up and one stone rain come in foil, and then you've got a nice little azalea art card as well from um, Maxim Costin who did the young nice. version. So nice little extra bonuses for um, for buying the armory deck. Um, so, uh, so that was cool. And what else have I done? I'm just editing more league that means nothing games. Uh, so the round ones are gonna are uh, gonna finish up this week. So all the televised round ones will be by, be finished by the end of this week, and then the round twos will start airing next week. Uh, so that's that's good fun as well. There's been some absolute barn burners of some games in the round twos, some insane turns, including one from our co-host Bill in his second game. Um, so uh, so yeah, that's going to be continuing, of course, as well. So a lot of editing on Go Again Gaming, but the busiest I've ever been this year, you know. I keep saying this, but at the start of the year, I was like, what do I do on my channel this year? Um, but this this year has been ridiculously busy with regards to the content that I've been putting out for gameplay stuff, which I'm grateful for. So, yeah, that's it, really, for this week in, this week in Fab. Nice. I also made some silly Aurora edits as well, because that's definitely a hero I want to play with when she comes out in Rosetta, because... You, um, you, you, you know that I used to love Viscerai when I first started, didn't you? Yeah, I think, I, I, I think you. Yeah. Viscerai was one of my early favorites as well. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty much we're pretty much the same. That's why uh, <laughs> we love the Arcane Rising. It's one uh, one of our favorite sets, right? Arcane Rising. That's why we got invited to do the Arcane Rising box thing in San Jose because people, yeah. people knew. I think Arcane Rising is like my second favorite set now, Outsiders being my first, but yeah, I, I always love Arcane Rising. It was also like the first yeah, time I really went like super big into any card game. I bought like many, many cases of first edition Arcane Rising. I bought so much. Um, all of the yeah. all of the first edition Command and Conquers that I own, I literally opened from packs when the set was brand new. Um, so I still, I still have those. I still have those and then a set of foil ones. And I also I opened, <laughs> I opened a full set of foil um, unlimited ones. Uh, so yeah, Arcane Rising has been pretty good to me for the most part. For the most part, yeah. I have opened up first edition cases that did not have any legendaries, so those are always pretty pretty crappy. Um, both by back in, back in the day standards and by today's standards, pretty crappy both ways. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know how I got into how I got onto the subject of Arcane Rising. I was speaking about someone else. And Viscera, you mentioned Viscera. It's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so Rune Blades. Uh, so I've always oh, been a big yeah. fan of. Always been a big fan of Rune Blades. Um, Viscerai mainly because it had that goth, sort of warlocky, purple, dark energy about him. Sort of interdimensional being that can tap into different realms. I've always liked that side of things. And um, my D and D character, the the second campaign that we was going to do, I'm not sure whether we will still do that. Hopefully, who knows? Um, maybe that's a, that's something we can we can revisit at some point. But there was a little bit of that energy in 
Azra's continuation of his story was that he fell into the fell into Iriathiel or however you pronounce it, and then came back with a weapon from that realm because he, he turns into a rune blade to a certain degree. Um, so yeah, so I always love rune blade, and Aurora just looks looks like something I would want to play. She looks just absolutely stunning with regards to the artwork. Ario is just fantastic, and it gives me like Final Fantasy vibes. I did another picture edit today with Aurora standing uh, in Besaid Island, which is like the first place you go to in Final Fantasy X, and she's holding the Kalad Bolg sword, which is the ultimate weapon that Tidus can get in that game, because that's what her sword looks like. Her sword looks like Kalad Bolg. So if you know what I'm talking about, leave a comment in the section below but leave a comment on the section below on the Living Legends podcast video if you can. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> um, But yeah, Final Fantasy X fans, you will know exactly what I'm talking about here with the Colored Bolg sword. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, I would love to spoil this sword, but it's probably very unlikely because the first strike deck's coming out soon, and I imagine her sword will be in that deck. So we are going to see it soon, I reckon. Yeah, um, um, I think the first strike decks, are they coming out at Gen Con, which I believe is like this weekend? I, I think they're going to be available to be played at Gen Con, so we'll we'll, pro we'll likely see weapons for both, well, for for all of the, uh, or no, well, not both, it's just uh, Aurora and... Terra and Aurora. Yeah, Terra. Terra's the big guardian yeah. dude. Um, big guardian bloke, yeah. I, I really like Aurora. Out, out of all the characters revealed so far, she's probably the one that I'm most likely to play. Um, I'm a big fan of, like, yeah. silver-haired characters in general, and she looks great. Absolutely, yeah. And... She gives me Lexi vibes, and Lexi is like my second favorite hero in the game. So, you know, yeah, uh, new new news really up there like... a little bit, but I, I do like Lexi quite a bit. Oh yeah, yeah, just the, the whole thematic new is yeah, it's definitely definitely up your street with regards to that succubus demon sort of luring you into false sense of security type character, which is really cool to explore that. And that's what Brian and James said as well. They really really went in on that succubus vibe, didn't they? And preying on your desires and preying on your own cards and all this so that's, that's a really really cool flavor um but what i really really like about rosetta is the fact that um we're exploring individual elements because aria was a mixed mixed elements wasn't it whereas this one is all lightning rune blade or all lightning wizard or all earth wizard and all earth rune blade i think i think uh i think aria sort of blown its load a little bit too quickly with regards to mixing the elements and giving you essence and access to two i think it just blew its load too quickly whereas this one we get to explore lightning in all of its in all of its glory as a hero just lightning hero um she also from the trailer the trailer was sick well obviously we're going to go into what was spoiled at pro tour amsterdam soon but it also just gave me like she also gave me like the flash type vibes that she oh, yeah. pure speed all over the place um but yeah it was yeah i just can't wait to see what comes out for her um but again just one of those characters that you you can vibe with on an aesthetic level it doesn't matter whether they're good or not you still want to play them because they just look good uh it's similar to how like you said it doesn't matter whether news good or not i'm still going to just play it because she looks good and she has some cool cards right so. yeah i mean like it goes it goes pretty far for me to, the, to that degree because i would never play a character that i think doesn't look good like yeah, i don't care if they're the right. best in the game I'm not playing them if they look like if they look like ass. I'm just it's just not yeah. the way I work, and I'm just I wouldn't find enjoyment out of it. So like no, yeah. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. Aurora looks I mean, great. I can't. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I can't see. We can go into the main topic now, but I, again, I agree. I can't see myself playing someone like Oldim or Terra or even like Osilio, a giant robot. I'm just like nah. I just don't. I don't, I don't want to play with that. Thanks. I'd rather just play with with this character or whatever. So, Arcelia in particular is pretty funny. Yeah. Just because and we'll get to, we'll get to it. <laughs> just because he's just <laughs> he's got no legs, man. He's got no face. He's got no legs. Um, yeah. He's just like a bunch of floating metal pieces with like glowing stuff inside of him. That's what he is. Um, yeah, well, the the, the, the the adult hero art for Asilio now just basically confirms that it's just a ball of energy with, like, floating metal around it forming a, a form. So, yeah. The, and the funny yeah. thing is, is the um, the young art was the art that where he's, like, huge and there was, like, the scale humans. The 
You can't see it in the actual card art, but in the full art, you can see it. The humans are like super yeah. tiny at the very bottom. Like he's like, I don't know, a hundred times bigger than they are or something. And so like yeah. the adult art is literally just like the same thing. He's just kind of like not on the wall anymore. He's like chilling in some blue background with swirly magic and crap. Um, so Yeah. And yeah, we'll, we'll obviously get to, we'll obviously get to this as well, but it looks like, it even looks like Ocil the Ocilio character is is smaller because he's like surrounded by like these edges, these ledges, perhaps that make him like feel like he's smaller. I mean, maybe, maybe maybe he's, he's just in a there. maybe he's just in a huge area. Like maybe he's just maybe. like maybe everything is just like nothing massive. Yeah. Yeah, it's just no scale in that picture, is there? I guess so. We can't. And really I also tell about skin <laughs> we're, while we're talking about his size, I also want to mention how funny I think. Him having less health than the other heroes is hilarious, given the fact that he's like a hundred times bigger than a human. And he's got like less health than like Aurora, yeah. who's kind of like this tiny, fast, <laughs> tiny girl. Like she she yeah. has four more health than, than the giant, like the giant metal electric construct. I just think that's really funny. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. So yeah, it is, it is hilarious, and we spoke about it last time, didn't we? It's like the whole squirrel, the squirrels can take down and rackle problem that Magic has. Yeah. You've got enough of them. Um, but if you look at the... Uh, so there is a, a Cilio hero art on com. so the Rosetta assets, the marketing assets are now available. Um, so it, what I was thinking was, if you look at this uh, adult version of a Cilio, there's like a staircase in the background, which kind of makes it look smaller. But then I guess the the big massive door behind behind them is uh, is quite large. So maybe maybe I'm just chatting garbage. But um, yeah, probably still a huge robot. But we I'm digressing anyway. Now we should oh, probably I, speak. About I I do I do see the stairs. I mean, it could, it could just be massive too. I don't know. Maybe they just messed up on the scale in the first one. I don't I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know how he could shrink. He's like made of metal. Like I I don't know I don't know I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this guy or this, yeah. uh, this char being. character. Like, I don't know this what's being. going on with this, this, this thing, man. Um, yeah. Oh, well, it's funny. I'm sure a lot of people will vibe with it. So it's, it's fun to see our first sort of non human character. I mean, we've seen things like Levia and, you know, tentacles and stuff, but this is like a construct character. Um, yeah, it's, it's so interesting. Well, yeah. I mean, like, we've technically had Data Doll, who's also technically like oh, a yeah. construct. It's just she looks like a human, but she's really, you know, yeah. she's really an android. But still, like, I don't know. It's it's interesting. Um, before we dive into all of the cards, we had a lot of cards to talk about. I guess we should talk about what was shown at um, the Pro Tour and talk about that. And then then we'll like cap it off with with all of the cards. Uh, I think that makes sense because they kind of showed off the cards while they kind of did this little present presentation. And I don't think it'll take too long to go through the presentation. Um, mm. There's basically like a couple key things to note. There's some new booster products and we have like a timeline of like competitive events. So the least interesting for me personally is the, is the timeline of competitive events. I guess that'll tell you where I am with with um, with Flesh and Blood. I mean, but the like... In, the interesting thing about the competitive events uh, or, you know, for, for our sort of audience and our group, at least our circles, is that um, Brian mentioned in that uh, in that keynote that we should be able to guess where the next world is going to be. And so I imagine it's going to be back in America for the world's next year, which um, which is good because it means that I don't know whether it's going to be East Coast or West Coast, probably East this time, I imagine. Um, because w w we were thinking, or well, maybe even central, I don't know. I don't know where the big places are in the U S or what they would think about doing, but, um, that's, that's what we were speculating, weren't we? Before we knew it was in Osaka, we were think we were thinking, oh, maybe New York or maybe something like something like touristy. I could see would still make a, make a holiday out of. Yeah. I can see New York. They really like doing Vegas. So I can see Vegas. Um, if they want to get real spicy, they can do like a Seattle kind of kind of deal, or they can even do like if they want to go in the middle, they can do like a Texas 
kind of thing. But Texas. I would prefer <laughs> one of the coastal like one, I'd prefer like New York. Personally, I'd, I'd prefer New York or like uh, L.A. or Vegas or something like that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they have a lot of options, I think. Uh, New York personally would be cool because I've never actually been to New York. I've been to New Jersey, but I've never been to New York. So that, that'd be kind of cool to to go and experience. Um, one, one thing to... Do you, reckon, oh, go ahead. do you reckon you would be able to go to that then if it was in New York or US? Yeah, unless I had some other like um, obligations, I should, I should probably be able to go. Um, I'm going to be oh. probably going to the calling here in Portland... I don't think I'm going to play in the main event. I don't. I just don't think that's where I am. Um, but I might just go and do some side events and kind of hang out for one of the days. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's just kind yeah. of like... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so looking looking at this, so this is the roadmap, organized play roadmap for 2024-2025 starting in August. And I'm not going to read out every single event because there's an event every single month. Every single month there oh, is okay. something... Between skirmishes, pro quests, RTNs, uh, the national seasons, to uh, what looks like every set's going to have a world premiere. So we have um, world premiere in Tampa, another world premiere, and another world premiere, both of those at uh, undisclosed locations. And then we have, obviously, the worlds in Osaka, and then um, that's in November. And then we also have Pro Tour Europe in March of next year, and then uh, Pro Tour APAC region in July of next year. So it's just kind of like crammed full of events so um if you want to go yeah. to a flesh and blood event there's very likely going to be one near you unless you live in south america rip <laughs> south american shout out to all all my homies yeah. from brazil uh unless one of these world premieres think, is in like brazil but yeah i think i remember i think i remember brian saying on there that there's going to be a battle hardened in brazil but not a not a calling maybe i think that yeah if you if you watch the keynote there's a lo- he mentions all of the there's those are graphics as well for battle hardens and callings and stuff and there's a lot of places that are getting their first calling or battle hardened uh so italy is getting their first calling which is cool so congratulations to italy and team emperor i think are from from italy so they're getting their first calling i think it's in oh is it florence something like that but yeah i'm not sure if that's that's correct or not but yeah italy are getting their first calling um and um and uh, there's going to be a living legend calling in chicago as well so the first <laughs> nice. living legend format calling is going to be in chicago so that'll be funny to see how that that pans out that That's, calling level yeah and in amsterdam over the weekend uh kano actually ended up winning the living legend event which was interesting oh really i didn't, yep. I didn't hear that That's yeah, cool. yeah they, they have the bracket up you can see the brackets there was like a chain and some stuff but uh, I do believe Kano ended up winning it. I think the restrictions on Starvo kind of uh, held them back a little bit. Um, yeah, that makes so. sense. Do you remember what? Do you remember what the bracket was for that? So Kano chain. Uh, I, I let me. That, so I, I can I can pull it up real quick. It's like it's just on the Flesh and Blood uh, website. In the uh, in oh. case anyone's listening and want to find it for themselves, it's just in the Pro Tour Amsterdam live blog. And you just kind of scroll oh, down. Right. You have the battle hardened. Uh, let's see for the battle. Oh, so here is uh, the living legend. So, top eight. Oh yeah. We have yeah. <laughs> Prism, Zen, Chain, Icelander, Oldim, um, uh, Kano, Starvo, and then another Prism. So it looks like Prism was the highest represented, but wow, pretty so pretty diverse. Pretty diverse. Um, yeah, I was gonna say yeah. That's all all different heroes apart from the double Prism. That's crazy. That's pretty yep. good. And then the finals was uh, Nova Chan on Zen versus Alexander Vore on Kano, and Kano ended up winning. Uh, Starvo w- lost. In case you're like curious about the Starvo Mena, Starvo lost in um, the first round of the the top eight. So it was Starvo versus Prism, and they ended up uh, losing. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. And then uh, yeah. just just to, to note another, you know, since we're talking about these brackets, real quick. Um, for the calling, Charles Dunn, a former uh, U.S. national champion and also one of the developers of Diablo 4, uh, ended up winning the calling on Zen. So, um, yeah. Of so, no- uh, he- Charles, wasn't Charles, Charles was the guy who won with Earth Briar, right? In U.S. Nats. Is that yep. correct? Yeah, that's the, yeah, yeah. That's the last uh, Flesh and Blood like event that I did casting for was that U.S. Nats. 
2023. Yeah. Last year's U.S. Nats, and he ended up winning with Briar. So, uh, pretty cool. Nice. And then uh, second place in the calling was a new player, uh, Fabio Albrecht. So new, very, very strong uh, as well. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, what's kind of depends on your take on, on, on the meta, but that, that top eight, unlike the Living Legends top eight, this top eight was very dominated by uh, Mistville heroes. Um, seven out of eight of the heroes were part from part of the Misfell, and the other one was um, Victor Goldmane. So. so all eight of the heroes were from the latest two sets, and seven of them were from part of the Misfell. So, you know, take that for for what you will. Maybe you can just think of it as a new and growing meta. But uh, I, did, I did find it a little interesting. Maybe it's the safe picks. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see um, like what happens as a result of Uzuri winning um, as to what happens with regards to that because I don't think a lot of people were expecting that to happen whatsoever. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how it all morphs around that. I think callings are always... like Pro Tour is, Pro Tour is pure innovation, right? You, you saw Uzuri win. You know, it, could, it could be down to some lucky things here and there with regards to gem pairings and all this. But... Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how how that sort of shapes out because if if assassins start being good into the in you know in in the meta game at large, that then opens up things like Riptide to be good because Riptide has a fantastic matchup into assassins because of all the traps and all the reactions that you can get access to. Um, so that's going to be interesting. And then you could also argue that like guardians and stuff could also be pretty good. But then you've still got illusionists and other things floating around and news that can still prey on guardians so it's going to be interesting to see what happens going forward um so uh congrats to shoma yet again for shaking things up so it'll be interesting to see what happens yeah shoma shoma yamamura from japan it was his first time out of the country too which is which is pretty cool um yeah <laughs> All right, so let's go back to the uh, presentation. So we went over the organized play events. So we now have the product roadmap for 2024, 2025. Um, not a lot of sets. They, they they continue to have like the the four, the, the one set every four to five months. So we have Rosetta in September. We have another set, set 15 in January. And then we have another set in May set 16 and those are the only three sets kind of on the horizon and they're every like three to four months right um uh -huh. so they're continuing with with that kind of cadence then we also have the armory decks we're gonna have a, a crap load of armory decks so we have the azalea armory deck now in august um yeah and then we have uh in october we have another one in uh, november it looks like we have another one and then in april and july of next year we have uh, more so um got, got a lot of armory decks um i know they said they might yeah, Brian, might have new heroes in these armory decks um okay. yeah so i was literally just about to about to say so brian confirmed that there will be one new hero out of all of these out of all these armory deck products that are coming out in this calendar year which is the graphic that you can see on the keynote speech from um lss on their youtube channel brian did confirm that you know, during this calendar year, there will be a new hero introduced through Armory decks. I've got a feeling it might be this year. I think I've got a feeling it could be October, November because of Osaka. I reckon they might tie it to that. I um, I have I, I have a feeling it's going to be an ice hero with um, with with yeah. uh, Earth and Lightning be represented in Rosetta. We currently have yeah. no ice heroes in CC with uh, Lexi and Oldham both having Living Legend. And so it would make a lot of sense to me for them to put a new Ice Hero in October right after Rosetta. Uh, so that, that's kind of like what makes the most sense to me. I, I imagine a new Ice Hero. Don't know what class could be. Any class could be just a, an Ice Ranger with no mixed uh, talent. So, so like how we have the just um, Earth Rune Blades and the, the just the Lightning and whatever. I have a feeling that you know, we could see a um, just ice ranger to kind of like follow it up to to pair up with uh, Rosetta. That makes sense to me. Um, but 
Yeah, so it's we'll an interesting point as well because it comes off the back of Rosetta, which is all Aria based. So maybe they filter that into it. Um, but there's a load of more, load more armory decks. What? How much did you say? Five. Yeah. Five? So there's four more after Azalea. Um, two four of them come out in pretty quick succession. One in October, one in November, and then we wait yeah. about like four-ish months or more. We have one coming out in April, and then one in July of next year. Um, but I'll, we have. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll throw this over to the viewers as well. Like, leave a comment in the section below. Um, who, what, what armory deck do you want to see? What hit? What hero do you want to see represented in an armory deck? Be interesting to know, like, what people want to see because, as we've seen from these decks, they have really allowed um, like new cards to be printed and new sort of play styles to be explored, especially with the Azalea deck with all the aim counter stuff and the full equipment suite which supports it. It'll be interesting to see what heroes they choose to put in these decks like arachne for instance that would be sick to see an assassin hero get more support um more specializations more new cards that arachne might benefit from like contracts and other things that could be cool to see um what other heroes haven't had haven't seen support in a while i mean dash maybe ra rangers know, but... man i mean like we just had we just got the azalea deck but we literally mm -hmm. only have two rangers in cc like it's just Azalea and Riptide. Like getting like a new Ranger. That, that's that's kind of another reason why I, I thought like a, a Ranger, like an Ice Ranger. Like getting a new Ranger at all would be very good, unless they put Ranger in the new set. Which I, I also kind of have, uh, have a feeling that the next set's going to be Savage Lands, and I think we're going to get a Ranger in that set. But uh, maybe. Yeah. So uh, so just just going off of this, so I've made a few notes as well from the thing. I just don't want to forget any of these notes I made mm -hmm. as well. Is that um, Arachne? Also, uh, sorry, <laughs> Brian made an Arachne joke. He was like, um, he he hinted at the next couple of sets, and he was like, right, I'm I'm trying to get this through development, and uh, the the next the next set I want to re release is Oops, all Arachnes. <laughs> well, <laughs> so Brian. Well, Brian clearly wants an all assassin and all assassin set. Well, Always hinting at Arachne support. They basically announced a product that that could happen. We'll talk about that after you're, after you're done talking about this stuff. But there's essentially oh. that that could actually happen. Mm. So, um, but um, yeah, so I just wanted to mention mention that as well, uh, and everything else we can just get onto when it comes. So, what were you going to say next? Okay, so I just want to quickly just cover the first strike decks so those first strike decks we mentioned oh, before yeah. they will be available starting uh gen con at the beginning of the month so like this weekend uh interesting to note at least on the image that i have they have no more no more first strike decks which is weird right. on this roadmap um yeah i don't know if he said why i don't know so that I that's confusing so, no. to me if if they're doing these as new play intro products, it would make sense to put these out for every new set. So I would assume we would get one in July or in January and May when the new the other sets come out. But that's just kind of weird. It just makes it just makes the first strike decks even more puzzling to me. Um, just in general. Yeah, to see if, yeah, I don't know whether it's just, this is just an experiment or not. But the fact that it's got like a logo saying first strike and, you know, it doesn't yeah that doesn't make sense to have just one thing for for a whole year i don't know maybe they should i don't know we'll see but i know what you mean yeah and that that's also the only product listed under the new player category uh which is also interesting and then we have something brand new that they that they mentioned the mastery pack now the mastery pack is i don't have a full image for the mastery pack at, at the ready here but the mastery pack, the way I understand it, is it is a pack that you could play with Crack Shuffle and Play, I believe, um, that fun. is all one class. Um, and yeah. the mastery pack coming up, I thought it was hilarious when they announced it. I'll tell you why in a second, but it is Guardian. So we do have a mastery pack coming up in March of next year, it looks like, between March and April. So in March of next year... Mastery Pack Guardian, an entire set that is only Guardian cards um, and can be played limited via Crack Shuffle Play. Now, I don't know anything else really about this. I don't know if it's going to be all 
new heroes, returning heroes, a mix of cards, reprints. I don't know. Um, but I think it's an interesting thing. I think it's. I think it's really funny that they picked Guardian because Guardian like just yeah. just had a set with heavy hitters and has had like been present in almost like almost as much set is it so Guardian has been in the first flesh and blood set. I'm not gonna count the the supplemental supplemental sets because those have all the classes, so you can say that for all of them except for like Assassin and um Illusionist. So so Guardian is in three sets so far, I think, right? So the first set, uh Aria heavy hitters and then like the, all of the supplemental stuff. So like, and then guardian yeah. also has like a crap load of heroes, like among the most in the entire game. Um, whereas some classes like Ranger has like three that have ever been made. Guardian has like an absurd amount. If you include like the young heroes, even if, if you don't include the young heroes, it still has an absurd amount. Um, so like guardian is yeah. just kind of funny to me. What that tells me is that they might not have Guardian in a set for a long time. That's what that's what that signals to me is like we need to put Guardian somewhere and so here's its own thing. And cuz we're not putting it in any set for a while. That's that's what I get from that. Um Yeah, I so. think so cuz they've got they've got three is it three Guardians at the moment? They got Betsy, uh Bravo, uh Bravo showstopper, Victor in CC, I'm thinking of anyway. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, both, yeah, both. We've had multiple guardians hit Living Legend in CC because it's been traditionally a very powerful class. So Starbo hit CC, Oldham hit C, or Starbo, Starbo and Oldham hit uh, Living Legend. Um, so yes, yeah, so we've had five in CC. Yeah, we've had five in CC plus a bunch in uh, like we've also had like Valda and the Bravant and. Am I think am I missing someone? I might be missing someone. But we've had like we've had a lot of guardian oh, heroes. Yoji. Yoji, we had Yoji. Um I still think I feel, feel I'm missing someone. But like Guardians have like a crap load of heroes, and I just I just think about other heroes like or other classes like like I said, Ranger, who's got three. Rangers had three heroes total. Um So yeah. um I don't know. We'll we'll see. Yeah, we'll that see. makes sense. So yeah, so that, that's what my my thoughts are regarding the um, what's it called Ma- mastery pack? Yeah, mastery pack. Um, yeah, I mean, a, a good argument was made as to why it exists. You know, uh, Brian obviously scours the internet and looks for feedback where he can to make the best products, of course. And you know, a lot of the questions that were asked in various threads and stuff online was, you know, I've just started the game. I love Azalea. You know what? what was the best thing to buy for this hero and you can point to things like arcane rising because red and the ledger and stuff are in there or you are not the death whistle of course or you could point them to outsiders where you got all the lace with cards and the buffs and premeditates etc but there needs to be one thing that you can say right just get the mastery pack ranger because all of the cards you need are in there um if you pull them uh, it just gives you a nice big load of cards that you can build a deck with so it makes sense as to why they're doing this, and it's, it's it's cool because I do miss the supplementary sets like Crucible and Everfest where you could just open a bunch of weird cards for all classes. Um, so I do like this this entry to the product line. It'd be interesting to see how it how it sort of how it's received when it comes out. Uh, you know, it's, it's Guardian, so I'm probably never going to really touch it. So yeah. It'd be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, and how many you unique cards come in these sets as well because they will be unique ones um and obviously reprints as well of their spinal crushes and you know all that sort of stuff so it's a flesh and blood is becoming a very interesting case study for trading card games so it's Mm. it started to how do i want to put this Flesh and Blood has begun to veer off the path that I personally enjoy in regards to, like, set releases and support in the set. So, like, okay, what I mean by that is in a lot of trading card games that I play, um, everything gets all the support every single set. So what I mean is, like, in Magic the Gathering, when a new set comes out, every single color gets something. You get a bunch of stuff almost equally, right? So, like, the ma- the new Magic set right now, Bloomborough, is just, ca- just came out, and all of the things, I mean, it's all, like, little crit- critters and animals and red wall and it's really cute and twee and stuff but it's still every class still or every Weber, color it? it's gets still white yeah 
yeah white um, black blue red green whatever yeah and then like yeah. in um the game that i'm playing the most right now uh like shadowverse evolve every single set every single class gets something for this game too so every time a new set comes out I literally build six brand new decks because all of the things get new stuff. And I have this cool moment where I build new decks for every single class. Um, Flesh and Blood is not like that, like at all. Um, in fact, right. in the last couple of sets, we've only had like a couple classes, right? Like, like we had three. Um, it's usually been like two or three, um, like recently or like or less. Um, if you if you count um, Bright Lights and the only having mechanologists and so like out of the how many classes are there in flesh and blood now like 10 plus like when you have a set that comes out that only appeals to like 30 percent of your audience minus like a couple generic cards and maybe the class you got got a you know expansion slot or something it's a really really interesting thing to think about it's changed the way i buy the game uh, especially as i kind of yeah. like solidified where i am in flesh and blood i'm like an assassin player and so i have my all foil uzuri deck and I don't really need to buy much else. And right. like, I think it's just a really interesting thing. And like, it's, I don't know. It'll be, it'll be interesting. I keep saying the word interesting. It'll be fascinating to see how this pans out for Legend Story Studios as a company. Like when you release a product like the, um, like the, the, the Mastery Pack Guardian, you know, that, that sounds awesome for all the Guardian players, right? But that's like, what, yeah. 10 percent or less of the total flesh and blood player base. And you're making a product only for them. And I guess like the counter argument is, hey, you can still play Crack Shuffle Play. You can still play Limited. But that still people are going to buy cases of that to do Crack Shuffle Play. They might do it a couple times at the LGS, which is cool and inter interact with it a little bit. But for the most part, a lot of people are going to ignore it. Um, and so I think it's really interesting. Um, it does open up avenues for like, like I mentioned, this is what I mentioned for the Arachne thing. You could, they could literally just make a, you know, Master Pack Assassin and put a bunch of Arachne stuff in it. And they, that, that could be the Arachne thing. Um, they can do that for also, any, any class. As a, as a, as a rebuttal to that, you know, because, because Flesh and Blood is a hero centric game. What happens if you buy Mastery Pack Guardian and is it just Guardian guardian class or is it bravo is it old no is idea it victor? because if you pull a victor specialization and you're looking for bravo cards you just wasted wasted time so i guess mastery, i guess the mastery pack stuff might just be guardian class you know every guardian can play it because i have no no idea yeah. no idea i yeah that's what i mean it, it's going to be interesting to say the word that you've said a few times it is interesting because it's going to be interesting to see how they how they tackle that is it just going to be a class pack it kind of kind of hints at it but then you're ignoring the heroes so you're, you're just focusing on the class you're ignoring the heroes which is also a detriment as well because you're not getting any new bravo specializations or victor specializations yeah. I, so yeah and that's why i said like i think it's going to be interesting to see how this affects legend story studios because I think, mm. like, in the terms of just the game, sure, it's fine. You know, Guardian players get some new Guardian stuff. That's cool. But, like, how profitable is this for Legend Story Studios? How, how does this make Legend Story Studios enough money to be able to continue doing other cool things and, you know, all, all of the other stuff? I don't know. It's just it's just kind of an interesting thing. And I no other card game really on the market right now is doing this. Other games have done stuff like this in the past, like Legend of the Five Rings with the clans right so you'd have like some sets that only have like two clans like this is the mantis and crane set or whatever um and flesh and blood is more and more reminding me of that less and less reminding me of something like we mentioned magic the gathering or like shadowverse where every single set has support for everything it's very specific and very targeted and to that degree for me as like a I love card games. Card games are like my life. Um, and I love, I actually really, really enjoy buying new sets and building a bunch of new decks. But I can't do that for Flesh and Blood unless I want to play all of the classes. And it's just kind of like this weird, it's this weird, I don't know, it's just, it's just it's this weird thing. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it all feeds back, it all feeds back into the hero thing that, we, uh, that we've said before is, you know, the, the fact that you identify with certain heroes means you're just not going to buy some products in this game um, unless 
there is a um, a sick looking aesthetic set that you can get interested in, like Aurora, for instance. You know, I'm yeah. probably going to build out that hero because I like the look of it. But what what they could do to keep people on on board with the sets that they might not be interested in because of the class or the aesthetics, etc., is build a story into these sets like Rosetta, yeah. like Monarch, etc. But they're not doing it still. They're still not doing it. So, you know, that's another thing that can keep people invested is from each set, you know, you're going to different sets for different reasons or whatever. You continue the story, but there isn't, there still isn't any any movement on that. So, it's, well, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I will say they did release story for Part the Misfail. It was very, very late, but Part the Misfail yeah. story ha- has now been released. So, Maybe this means that they have, you know, caught up and maybe we'll get simultaneously or simultaneous story releases with Rosetta. We'll see. Um, but, but exactly. But we need we need to know where we're going with it. Whereas at the moment, it's just, oh, OK, we're going back here or doing this or doing that. Um, it would be, it'd be interesting to see if they can tie that into the sets going forward like Magic used to do to a certain degree. Uh, and then you've got all these other other projects uh, or other products in the back where you can just be like, oh, okay, yeah, what do I do if I want to, you know, bulk out my Guardian collection? Oh, yeah, I'll buy a case of Mastery Pack for Guardian or whatever. Um, or there's a new Armory deck for a new hero. That looks cool. I'll buy that because I want to get into that hero at an entry level. Then you've got an Armory deck that you can play and upgrade. So it all could be symbiotic to, you know, to, to sort of, pull on all those strings because so i think the main money that they're making is from the actual sets themselves i don't know i don't know the business side of it but um where was i i was, I was thinking i was going to try and go somewhere else but i can't remember where, where it is now oh yeah so um with regards to the sets and the where we're going and stuff brian did say that we're going to be returning to an area of wraith um so that's an interesting point uh uh, point as well P- interesting pie and he said pie then that's an interesting <laughs> pie uh, um, um that's an, an interesting thing so he said returning to an area of wraith so it'll be interesting to see where we go next because I, returning means that we've been there already yeah i do know that james once said that monarch is a trilogy and the third monarch set should be in 2025 so next year we should have the final of the monarch trilogy but i i don't know if it's at the beginning of the year for some reason i I feel like it's the first set i I i feel like the first set might be the the final of the monarch trilogy um and then he said it had like big story ramifications and yada yada like i don't know We'll, we'll have to see when the time comes but that's what I remember James saying at least like about a year or so ago um, when the uh, um, Dust Hold On was, was coming out and stuff. So, yeah. Maybe we're going Maybe we're going to the Demonastry again because that, I think we, I think we visited it to a certain degree in Arcane Rising because there was a big story of Viserai and the fact that you went to that big mirror. That'd be cool. Stark. So that, that would be sick, because there's a lot of stuff in... If you look at the Demonastry lore, there's loads of weird creatures and weird entities and stuff in there that have names and all of this. Uh, I haven't read it for ages, but there's loads of stuff on the Demonastry. I mean, so it'd be interesting to see if we go back there. That'd like, cool. Dust Till Dawn took place mostly in Solana, so it'd be cool to see the opposite. It would be cool to see a place... Like, the yeah. the final of the Monarch trilogy taking place at the Demonastery. Maybe the heroes you know, form a, I don't know, a last resistance to go take it to the, the monastery or something. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. The last time we heard is uh, Levia got consumed and is now Blasma Fett and is like trashing Solana. That's the last thing we heard in the lore. Right. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, we will see. Um, so there's. Uh, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, yeah, there's another thing that was that was announced as a <laughs> yeah. product per se. Yep, yep. But yeah, take it away. What is it? I was literally <laughs> gonna say the same thing. Yeah, I was gonna say we have one more thing yeah. before we go over the cards. We have one more thing to talk about today, even though we've already spent like an hour on this, 
And I don't know anything about this product. So uh, maybe maybe you got some more information. I didn't watch the full keynote, but the product is the fifth anniversary booster product. It is a booster product. It looks really mm-hmm. cool. It just says fifth anniversary. As do you have any more information on this? Yeah, absolutely. So these fifth anniversary packs are only going to be available in Osaka this year, apparently. Okay. So, so, um, so they're only going to be available at, at Worlds this year. Um, so I imagine there's going to be a load of people trying to get trying to get them. Um, and Brian was using it as, oh yeah, make sure you're make sure you're there. You don't want to miss out because this is only going to be at Osaka. So God knows what are in these packs. But um, <laughs> now it's my turn yeah, to 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 beg you and Bill to to buy stuff for me from from Japan. Last time you guys, I got the yeah. playmats for you guys. This time I'm gonna be like, please get me at least one of these stupid packs. Like I want to open one, at least one. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll get, well, Bill's not Bill's not going either. It's just me. Oh, just time. you, just I'll you. Okay, yeah. I don't know why I thought yeah, Bill was going. Sure, I'm sure Bill will want one as well, though, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I'll find out how to get them and then source them for you, like you did for me, um, with the azalea mat. Um, so, Hell yeah. so yeah, that, that, that's basically what it is. They're only available in Osaka. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see, um, I've used that phrase so many times today. It's going to be interesting yeah. to do this. It's going <laughs> yeah. to be interesting. Yeah, but yeah. it is. There's so much, there's so much going on, you know, that we don't know about yet. It's just a roadmap. So it is all interesting stuff. Um, so take a shot every time you uh, you hear the word interesting, and you'll have a well of a time. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, going to be cool to see um, what is in there and uh, and what value those packs might fetch. Whether there's unique, probably not going to be unique cards in there. Maybe just like special treatments of reprints or something, cold foil versions of stuff or whatever. Alt we'll art versions of staples would be peak. Like alt yeah. art, like. E Strike, Sink Below, Command and Conquer, mm. Tunic, like just alternate art versions of all these would be like the best. It would be it would be so cool. It wouldn't be like unique stuff. Yeah. It would just be like cool, you know. Cool effects. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Um, mm-hmm. And with that, I think that is it for the mm. keynote news. And with that comes a bunch of card spoilers. And we'll try. We've already an hour and two minutes into this. We're gonna, we'll try to go through it fairly quickly. But dude, there's a lot of cards. <laughs> there's a lot of cards. So, yeah. uh, do you do you have the February page up as? I do. Yeah, I do. Okay. Rosetta spoilers so far. Yeah. So I, I figure what we can do is we'll alternate. So we'll go between. Uh, I'll read one out, and mm-hmm. and then you'll read one out, and we'll just alternate. We'll give like a quick quick opinion of the card as well. Um. I think we should yeah. redo the new heroes that they showed because they are slightly different. Um, and that's right. Yeah, let, let's just kind of kick it off. So I'll, I'll kick it off with uh, Florian Rotwood Harbinger. He looks really cool. Um, goth Daddy. Yeah. And he's, um, you know, same kind of stat lines, four intellect, 40 health, elemental rune blade here. And he's basically the same as the young version, but a little different. And it's exactly what we had anticipated back when we talked about mm-hmm. this originally. So his hero ability scaled up as for the adult version. So he says, if there are eight or more earth cards in your banner zone, Florian gets, if you would create one or more aura tokens, instead create that many plus one of each of those tokens. And he has essence of earth. And you compare that with the young version, same effect, except you need four or more earth cards for the young version, eight or more for the adult version. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not going to go too much into Florian here, uh, but I'll tell you whether or not I, my, my thoughts on this kind of scaling mechanic. And I think it's cool. I think that they're designing this mechanic to be more, um, what's the right word? I don't say more tuned, but to be balanced better for the different formats that you play them in, uh, both for limited yeah. and for blitz for the young version. So I think it's cool. And I think that it is likely a very good and smart way to approach design so thumbs up for me yeah yeah absolutely especially if you're scaling it to the life as well because it's basically just double you know doubling the life doubling the requirement of what needs to be in your thing so they're basically saying blitz is half the game that cc is because of the fact it's just from four to eight and 20 to 40 etc so um we'll see we'll see uh 
what scaling they use for future heroes in that regard. It's probably going to be similar, though. Just going to be double the amount, or, you know, half the amount of whatever's being generated on the card. Um, but yeah, so uh, Florian's going to be pretty cool. I imagine there's going to be some parallels to Golgari in Magic, where you just want to fill your graveyard up with things, uh, block with things to get them into your graveyard quicker. Um, and there'll probably be some cards that say, you know, put some top cards you deck into your graveyard or whatever and then do something or other cards that, that sort of mirror that because that, he's got a very Golgari-esque feeling, right? Yeah, Golgari's um, like one of my favorite, arc, like reanimator rock type style stuff is like one of my favorite archetypes in Magic. So I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll actually really like Florian. I don't know, we'll see. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, so yeah, moving on to... Um, uh, the one of the new cards. Were we, were we speaking about all of them in this list, or are we just moving on to the ones that we haven't seen yet? Well, let's just do the ones we haven't done yet. Yeah. Okay. So this is a majestic. Uh, this is a, a new card, uh, a new type of card as well that we're seeing in this uh, in this new set, and that's the split cards or the meld cards. I should yeah, say. Yeah. Let me. I need to um, actually adjust the regions for this because they they pop up sideways, which well, is nice. Well, which is nice on February. So. It is, yeah, very good, very good innovation there. Um, but um, this one is called uh, Fissile Bloom for one side and Life for the other side. It's a yellow pitch, zero cost, block three card. So Meld is a, um, a mechanic where you can either play one or both halves of the card. Um, so this card costs zero to play. Um, so both halves will cost zero, but if the card costs one to play, it would cost two, so one for each side. That's how the maths work on these particular cards. Uh, one of uh, the sides, Fissile Bloom, is a rune blade action. Uh, so it says, says, create X rune chant tokens, where X is the total life you've gained this turn. So that also uh, says to us that, um, that Florian might also want to gain life as well, because this is a rune blade, rune blade action on this side. Um, and that's the total life you've gained this turn. So if you gain three life, you're going to get three rune chance. It's not just for each instance of life gain. It's adding up all of the life you've gained this turn. And then speaking of life, you called this as well. Life is an actual thing in this in this game, uh, in this set, I should say. And this is just uh, a zero uh, zero cost earth instant gain one life. So if you meld both of these things together, you're going to gain one life and create one rune chant token for nothing. That's what you're going to be able to do. But then if you've gained loads of life during that turn, then drop this for zero, you're going to gain loads of rune chant tokens, uh, which seems pretty cool. But yeah, you can meld both of these together anyway for zero cost. So I, I think that's how it works, isn't it? You can just meld it for nothing. That's the, that's the interesting thing is why would you not want to meld this? Why would you just want to play one half of it when you can play two? I don't for for the zero cost ones, at least this one, I don't think you would ever not want to do that. Unless you're unless your opponent's yeah, playing like the poison the well card that makes you lose life instead of gaining life. Um yeah. other than that, like that's I don't one Yeah. Yeah, that's one dichotomy that, you know, if you've got a zero cost split card, why would you ever not play both halves? Um yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's an interesting point. So leave a comment section below as to why you think that might be. Another interesting thing about this card is that I think it's the very first instant that has a block value on it. Uh, it has it's, it blocks for three, even though half of the card is an instant. Like life. Oh yeah, is an instant. Um, yeah. Oh, you know what? It just it just it just occurred to me. It says you may play one or both sides of this card. One of them is an action. One 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 side is an action. The other side is an instant. I wonder if you play life as an instant, you might not be able to do the other side. You're like if you, if you play life on your opponent's turn, I don't think you can do the action part. Like I don't think you can play the action part on your opponent's turn. Um, oh, that makes sense then. Yeah, that would make sense. So if it's during your turn, you get to do both. But if it's during your opponent's turn, you can only really do the instant version. But then that that will work with what the wizards want to do on their opponent's turn anyway. And Aurora can play lightning cards to then play uh, and create an embodiment of lightning. So I guess you can do things on both your turn and your opponent's turn because a lot of them play instant speed. So I guess that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, that definitely makes sense now. Yeah. So, interesting. Well done. Yeah. Okay, cool. I don't know. Um, I think these are cool. Uh, I think these are very strong actually. And I think these remind me of Magic the Gathering even more. So, because 
There's a split. There's a split cards in Magic that do like Fire Ice. Um, Fire Ice is where you pick either side, but there are other versions of these in Magic where you get to do both. So that's what. Well, that just reminds me of. Yeah. There's a there's a split card called Flesh and Blood, isn't there? And there might be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is there is a card called flesh and blood split card uh, that's guaranteed so that's so good um, um all right well but yeah let's move on to the next one i have another hero um well actually i'll, I'll talk about the hero real quick i'm not sure if we want to spend too much time on on this um because mm. i just want to mention aurora real quick uh because one we get to see her art which is great very pretty um, but two, she does not scale. So I wanted to mention this just because we find that not all of the heroes scale with uh, the adult version and the young version. So Aurora Shooting Star is the adult version. Four intellect, 40 starting health. Once per turn instant for two resources, create an embodiment of lightning token. Activate this only if you played a lightning card this turn. And she has essence of lightning. And then the young version is literally the same thing just 20 yeah. health so like this one does not scale whereas florian yeah. does um so i just wanted to point that out um that it's interesting some of them scale some of them don't scale um and also like we talked about earlier aurora looks she looks great um the actual the good thing about oh, go ahead go ahead the good that's really a good thing about this as well is that the more cards you see the more sort of lines you can think of like you know the the other cards that we're going to see in a moment like the lightning ones that you can play on your opponent's turn especially on turn one this makes you want to go second because you can with, with aurora you can ping them with your instant lightning cards then you can once per turn instant on their turn create an embodiment of lightning going into your turn so there's a lot of that uh, a lot of the play on your opponent's turn to then make your turn better um so there's going to be a lot of a lot of intricacies in that in that regard i think with what you play on your opponent's turn and what you play on your own turn Whereas wizards in the past and other things that care about instance have more or less just been, I'm going to pop off on my t on your turn and kill you, or I'm going to pop off on my turn and kill you in response or whatever. Whereas this seems a bit more balanced on each per each person's turn can you know do different things. So I like the way already that this is looking. It's not looking too overpowered. It's just looking like you can interact on each per each person's turn rather than just your own, but not over the top. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, but yeah. The next card. I'll go ahead and read the next card because Aurora really wasn't a new card. It was just reiterating that she doesn't have a she doesn't scale. Um, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. The next card is another one of the split cards. This one's called Burn Up and Shock. This one is a Rune Blade card, so it's a Rune Blade action and then a Lightning Instant. So you can only play this in a Lightning Rune Blade uh, deck. This one also costs zero, also has that meld effect. Uh, so you can play uh, one or both halves of this card. And then it also blocks for three. So another instant that blocks for three. Um, this, uh, the burn up side says, the next time an attack you control hits a hero this turn, deal four arcane damage to them. So it's an additional four damage on top of an attack if it hits. Mm. And then that part has go again. And then shock says, deal one arcane damage to any target. And this one is a lightning instant. Uh, so you can play this card on your turn, deal one da one damage to any target, and then um, then you have that next time an attack you control hits this here this turn, deal four arcane damage mm -hmm. to them. So yeah, pretty cool. This is like five damage for zero, which is uh, really good. This is yeah, this is yeah. really good. I don't know, this card's sweet. It's it's a red pitch card. I should mention uh, this one's a red pitch, and the last one was a yellow, but still good. Blocks with blocks with three as well. So I imagine this 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 is a rare as well. This one, yeah. so I reckon it could come in yellow and blue as well, um, which would just scale with deal four, three, or two yeah. arcane damage on the action. If this scale, if this came in blue, it would be nuts. It would be deal an extra yeah, two right, damage, yeah. but it would still be zero for one arcane damage blue, which is like kind of crazy. I imagine, I don't know if this will scale, but this card seems pretty cool. This seems really good. And at a rare, this seems really good and limited for sure. Um, yeah. This seems like so a one good thing to mention as card. well uh, is that it looks like, because of obviously there's only two elements in Rosetta, it looks like your earth, um, your earth instant will always be life and your lightning instant will always be shock. 
mm, by the looks of it. If you, okay. look, if you look at these cards, if you look at these cards here, the Earth ones always have life as an instant, and the Lightning always has shock. So what that means is, if you look at the hero abilities, it means that Aurora is always going to be able to shock the shock the opponent on her ter- on their turn, then pay two to get an embodiment for her follow up turn. What that also means is, as well as depending on what her sword does. Embodiment of Lightning basically will crack when you play an attack action card. So what you can also do is maybe just do some some Rune Blade actions and then swing your sword. That will not pop the embodiment. So you can just build up embodiments uh, and then swing your sword on your turn. And then when it comes back round again, you're going to be able to go even faster with the embodiment that you've done. So that's cool. Um, so it's good to good to note that you know shocks and stuff can be done. Uh, in your opponent's turn and also Osilio cares about discarding instants so he can just discard shocks to then draw a card yep. um, which we'll get to it which we'll get to in a bit but yeah I just thought I'd mention that you know both all of these um, cards look like they're just going to have life on one side or shock on one side depending on the element yep before I move on just uh, mentioning one last thing for the burn up uh, good to note that yeah. it is uh, just on an attack not an attack action card so burn up will trigger exactly. off of a weapon attack too so yeah, just the exactly. So it makes so it makes that weapon swing insane. So if you if you just want to uh, set do a setup turn, you can set up potentially on your opponent's turn by shocking them first for one damage, paying into your embodiment creator, and then on your turn just swinging your weapon, playing something like burn up before it, and then your weapons is actually attacking for a lot more. And then obviously that weapon will also have some ability attached to it. I'm assuming. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens with with that. But going on to the next hero, this is Verdance or Verdance, however you want to pronounce it. Yeah, Thorn of the Rose. Um, and we've seen the young version before, uh, which cares about if there are four or more Earth cards in your banner shown. Verdance gets whenever you gain life during your turn. During your turn, you may deal one arcane damage to any opposing target. Verdant Thorn of the Rose is just, again, the same as Florian. Uh, it's just up to if there are eight or more Earth cards. So exactly the same formula there. Um, and that's pretty cool, because once you've got your uh, graveyard online, all of your life instants will then ping your opponent on your turn. So that's just an interesting dichotomy, because every time you're, you're increasing your life, but you're decreasing their life. Uh, so if you can yeah. do that... You know, if you can get that scale tipping in your favor, once you've got that, that's going to be quite hard for them to try and keep up with. And it's, it seems like even as a wizard or a rune blade, Florian and, and Verdance feel like they're going to be sort of more mid rangey decks rather than the typical wizard or typical rune blades might be. So, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Like with Earth, Earth feels like a much slower kind of kind of thing. So, yeah, Ver- yeah. Verdance, Verdance is cool. That, uh, she seems really annoying, but you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you think about the heartbeat of Candlehold now that now that we've seen the the Verdance uh, hero ability be spoiled, we kind of kind of were on the right tracks. A lot of people called the same sort of thing. Life gain translates to damage. So heartbeat of Candlehold, when your ability is turned on, basically just says for one for one resource you can gain three life and ping three damage and go again. And it's a blue block three, which seems pretty good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, what have we got next? Next card is... We're ready to the heartbeat of Candlehold. We have another split card. So this one is Pulsing Aether and Life. This one actually costs one. So this says, Meld, mm-hmm. you may pay one um, or both halves of this card. Each costs one. So like as mentioned before, you have to pay the cost yeah. for both sides. So this one is makes life cost one. So the life side is still the same thing. It's just gain one life. It's an instant. Um, it also blocks three as well. But the pulsing ether says deal four arcane damage to any target. Um, yeah, I mean, seems pretty good. Like the rate is pretty on par with um, is it galvanic blast? The, the the two cost five damage red arcane damage common from um, arcane rising. Maybe that's not maybe that's not the name of the card, but there's there's one that does two cost um, five damage, and this is basically two cost five damage if you have Verdance's uh, ability on, right? Because the her ability will trigger, and then you'll do an extra point of arcane damage. So 
Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm. This one's just a rare. So this seems like another like pretty good pickup for uh, like limited. And, you know, being able to just to pay two, even if you don't do the extra points of damage, you pay two, uh, deal four arcane damage and gain one life. Seems good. Still a five point life swing. It still blocks for three, which is still kind of crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's, seems good. It's essentially in this in this format or limited or whatever, you know, you look at this card, you read it as a two for six because you you do the you the two for six value basically because you're gaining a life but dealing five yeah. you're still getting six value off of two resources which is pretty good um and like we all know how good life gain is you know arthur trahey won a pro tour off of a sigil of solace um so it it just um it just you know sigils and all that sort of thing could be really interesting to see what what happens to those because like the florian card we saw earlier was based on how much life you've gained this turn so that sigil actually equates to then three value on the other card um so yeah so it's going to be cool to see what happens with uh with this as it expands yeah yeah that's cool another thing as well is that these actions these wizard actions are not kano's you know, right, you're not yeah, playing no. these actions at you're not playing them at instant speed. You're just saying, I'm gonna shoot a spell at you. You're not playing this as an instant, you're just playing it as an action. For the most part. Uh you can still do your storm start storm striders BS and do that kind of stuff. Oh true. But outside of that, yeah. Yeah, you can. yeah. 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 Um Cool. So next one is um, Ostilio. We mentioned it briefly. Uh, so this is the robot, um, which uh, as a young hero has 18 life and has a and uh, as an adult hero has 36 life. This is the elemental wizard with uh, Essence of Lightning. And his ability, or its ability, whatever this thing is, once per turn instant, discard an instant, draw a card. Um, so all of the shock cards that have double faces, you can discard those to draw a card once per turn which uh, is interesting. It's not doesn't pop off too much, I imagine, because uh, you can only do it once. You can do I'm sure it, some will break it once per turn. So you can do it on your turn. You can do it on your opponent's turn. Um, I saw a lot of people, yeah. like the price of Brainstorm skyrocketed because of this guy. Um, so people are already kind of like brewing Brainstorm, especially like foil Brainstorms. Um, I know once what this was foiled, my buddy, my buddy DM Armada was like posting in our like little private chat he's like jim do you have three foil brainstorms um so uh, all, all the wizard uh, players are are uh pretty excited for it let me look it up real quick so brainstorm was one of the cards in one of the supplemental sets uh, i think it was in dynasty and it's kind of like this combo card let me look it up real quick uh yep here it is brainstorm so brainstorm is a um Wizard Instant, it's a three drop blue pitch card. It says, until end of turn, your hero gains, whenever you draw a card this action phase, deal one damage to any target. And so, okay, yeah, yeah. it just kind of synergizes with Brainstorm uh, shenanigans. And there's a bunch of like Brainstorm combo things that I've seen before. And so the price of Brainstorm skyrocketed from like a 25 cent card to like a six, seven dollar foil. So, or maybe more, I don't know. That's hilarious. The, the last week I was, or the one of the previous weeks I was like, I don't know how much Codex is, like thirty bucks, and it turns out it was like seventy, um, and uh, I sold my two extras. I was like, seventy bucks, yeah, sure, I'll, I have five of them, I only need three, so get out of here. Um, so, anyway, so yeah, I, I think Auxilio is cool. Um, I, it's gonna I, be, it's gonna be. Um... It's going to be funny to see what Volzar does as well. So Volzar, the lightning rod, is is a card that we've um, covered before. So I'm just going to sk skim over it here. Um, and it says, if you control an aura permanence with Sigil in its name, this costs one less. So we haven't actually seen the aura permanence that Auxilio cares about yet. So it's going to be funny to see what they do. Um, the These auras, these auras of lightning or whatever. Uh, wait a minute, is embodiment of lightning an aura? No, 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 it has, needs to have sigil in its name. I'm chatting garbage. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what these sigil of lightning auras do and how Asilio cares about them. Yep, yep, yep. Um, cool. Do you want to move on to the next card? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Cool. Uh, next card oh, is... I'm, 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 you're doing this one, aren't you? Null Shock. Sure, yeah, I'll do Null, Null Shock. So Null Shock is another one of the one-drop um, meld cards. This one... Notably, 
does not have any block value because both sides are an instant. So this is one side with yeah. wizard instant, the other side lightning instant. The, the shock side still does one point of damage. This, well, like I said, it costs one, so it'll cost two to play if you want to do both of them. And then the null side says, if target instant card has cost less than the total arcane damage you've dealt to target or to opposing heroes this turn, negate it, which means it doesn't resolve. It's like a counter spell. Um, so for two, you can deal them one damage and then you can counter something that costs, uh, counter an instant that costs one or less. And if you do more arcane damage, then you can do more. So if you can like maybe pump up that shock by, by one with your weapon, then you can counter something that costs two or less or whatever. Um, we already have a card that, that kind of, involved. yeah, yeah, yeah. And there, there already exists uh, a counter spell in Flesh and Blood, uh, Aetherize, that doesn't see any play. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll see play if all these instants become very strong. Uh, so this is an interesting card. This one is a Majestic. This feels very, very um, meta dependent and situational for sure. This one is not one of the ones I think is. I do not think this is very good in limited. It might be. It might be if there's a crap load of instants in the set. But generally speaking, it's probably not going to do that much. Might just do one arcane damage to your opponent. That's what it might do. And not block. Um, but it is yellow pitch, at least. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, in, it's interesting as well that um, that uh, this shock, obviously it's a yellow pitch shock with no defense value. If you want to play this half of shock, this one costs one. But if you go back to the other shock, that's a red one that costs zero. Yep. So... The shock, the shock instance can also have different values and on how you play them. So yeah, there's a lot of intricacies here. So it's gonna be interesting to see like how that is um, sort of broken down, um, you know, as to what's playable and what's not, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, next card is uh, another split card. This is shock, and this shock costs two. Yeah. So to deal one damage to to someone with this uh, half of the card, the instant side costs two. So that's quite a lot for one damage. But the wizard action on the other side is called Comet Storm. This also blocks for three. Um, and it says deal five arcane damage to any target, and it has meld. So obviously you'd have to pay uh, four to deal six damage to uh, to any target. Um, but the interesting thing is, as well with this, is you play both half of these cards. You can deal five damage to one thing and then one damage to another. So if there were allies yeah. out... You could you could you could just go ping ping ping, um, which is you something can, that <clears throat> you can UPF it too. So if you're if you're in UPF, you can blast two different yeah. players. Uh, I think you can also boost the power separately. So you can if, you can like pump them like with other arcane damage effects. So you can do like six damage and then two damage if you're able to yep. pump pump them both. Um, so I mean that that's kind of interesting. It's very expensive though. Like it's gonna cost you like yeah. four to do that plus whatever else you need so like maybe six so if you do like if you do like a full two like two blue pitch and then like somehow able to pump up both half of these with like a one drop ability like a crucible of aether weave plus something else or whatever um mm. you can do like what five six eight you can do like eight damage for like six resources that's still not super good to be honest um but yeah i don't know this is just a rare as well yeah. this this one also seems like a pretty good one for limited, and you would probably just be going like, I pay two and I blast you for five kind of, kind of deal, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting, um, the, the the target thing, because, you know, if, if allies, you know, care, if, 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 if you care about allies, you've got, an, you've got an answer for it, at least in this class. Yeah. Um, which is which is cool. Uh, so you can blast different um, different things. Uh, All right. So that's that. Oh yeah. Spe speaking of arcane damage, what's the next? Yes, thing? next card. The next card's really interesting. So this card is not a card that is. It's in the booster set, but it's different. Okay, so this card is called Sanctuary of Aria. This is a Rosetta macro card. That is the type. It is a Rosetta macro. So instead of it being an action or an instant, it is Rosetta macro. Uh, has no cost, no block, nothing like that, because you start the game with this in the arena when playing a Rosetta limited format. So you just get this. If you're playing limited, if you're playing Rosetta limited, you just get this. And it says instant for two resources, prevent the next one damage that would be dealt to you this turn by a source of your choice. Destroy this at the beginning of the end phase. So you can do that 
as many times as you have resources for. But at the end of the uh, end phase, it is destroyed. It's very similar to something they did in um, uh, in Uprising, I think. They they yes. had that hat. Helios Mitre. Yeah, the Helios Mitre. Yeah, they had yeah. that hat that you can just yeah. get. Um, what I like about this is that it doesn't take up a equipment slot. And it's also just kind of like their way of helping to balance the arcane damage problem that was around in Tales of Aria because mm. there was like no arcane barrier in Aria outside of legendaries. And so you just got yeah. arcane damage was just so good. It's like free, free damage. Um, so I like this. It's an interesting fix without having to rework the whole system. And I, I really feel like arcane damage is kind of like a just this weird thing that they have to like keep playing around with in terms of like how they deal with it from set to set um especially in regards to limited so i don't know it's interesting it's cool this is just a token by the way art is pretty it's got some meeps looking at a aurora borealis kind of thing with like some you know houses that have like uh you know an orange glow emanating inside like tavern looking things that's oh, really pretty idyllic but uh yeah it's yeah. cool Carlos Kachaga, of course it would be. One of Bill's favourite artists. Got the, and, got the little uh, meeps. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's a cool thing. The next card is one that we've seen already. That's Felling of the Crown and uh, Channel the Millennium Tree. We've seen quite a few of these ones now, the ones that are on February at least. Uh, but Felling of the Crown is pretty cool. It's just one of those, um, uh, one of the cards that has the new mechanic Decompose on it. So I reckon we're probably going to see a bit more of this as well. Um, so this is a three a three cost majestic attacks for four blocks for three, earth action attack. If there are four or more earth cards in your banish zone, this gets plus four, so it becomes a three for eight. And then when this attacks, you may banish two earth cards and an action card from your graveyard. And if you do, each hero puts a card from the hand at the bottom of their deck. So forced interaction. We're going to going to see hopefully a bit more forced interaction um, because uh, yeah. It's clear that uh, that the that the uh, the meta game at large likes things interacting. Uh, like note: uh, uh, This is an Earth card, so playable in Starvo. Yeah, brilliant. Yep. Playable in Starvo. <laughs> uh, Plus two, dominate. Go again. Let's go. Yeah. So ten, ten, dominate. Go again. Put a card from the bottom of in your hand on the bottom of your deck. Seems good. Yeah. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Cool. 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 Um, uh, so it's it, it's uh obviously the the next card we've seen uh, already, but um the interesting thing about the decompose mechanic is that it kind of uh anti synergizes with your earth heroes because they want to keep mm. cards in their graveyard. So yep. the fact that your your pet you're banishing cards away from your ultimate hero power is a decent cost, a decent sort of um, downside because this card is very powerful. So in order to use it to its best ability, you need to sort of go against what your hero is trying to do, but it's still quite a swingy card. So I guess those decision points are, are quite good, which is why um, they've uh, they've made the decompose mechanic. So you have to sort of pay against your overall strategy to make this work. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So for the sake of time, since we're already like an hour and a half in, let's skip... Let's skip the ones we've already gone over because we still have a bunch of ones mm -hmm. we haven't yet. So I think I think the next one, Channel the Millennium Tree, we've already talked about this one. Um, yep. And then we've also talked about Channel Lightning Valley. I don't think we've ch talked about Earth Form. Uh, it's a very simple card that has a... Oh, wait, uh, one sec. Channel the Lightning Valley with Shock. That's ridiculous. Oh yeah, so the that's first very time good. you deal damage to an opposing hero, so all of your shocks become free. You just draw a card off of shock. Yeah, if you want to do them at instant speed, that actually makes it really interesting. So, so, so Channel Lightning Valley. Before we get to the Earth Forms, as As mentioned it, Channel Lightning Valley is a zero drop lightning instance aura. It's a yellow pitch card, has no block, and it says the first time you deal damage to an opposing hero each turn, draw a card. Then it has Channel Lightning, mm. which is the same kind of channel effect that all the channel cards have at the beginning of your end phase. Put a flow counter on this and then destroy it unless you put a lightning card from your pitch zone on the bottom of your deck for each flow counter on it. So you can, this is an instant, so you can play it on your opponent's turn. So you can go instant speed, channel lightning valley, instant speed, um, shock, and then just deal one damage and then you draw a card. Um, and then you'd have to play another lightning card on your turn to kind of keep this around. But um, it's pretty sweet. 
Um, it does make the the choice between whether you want to play the, those lightning cards in your turn or your opponent's turn more interesting. Like that burn up shock, yep. where it was like it had the the action side, but it also had the zero cost one arcane damage side too. So like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's kind of interesting. If you don't think you can get the burn up side, if you really need another card, you can always instant speed shock them, draw a card. So yeah, lightning yeah. only seems pretty good. Well, that was quite cool. Yeah, with yeah. the with the the new sort of information that we have about shock being an instant, um, and some sides have a zero cost, it just means you can shock them, draw a card, and then if you want to, if you've got the resources to pay into something like Aurora's ability, you've played a lightning card this turn, um, which means you can activate your your hero ability to get an embodiment for the next turn. Then you can swing your weapon and then go around again and just yeah, it seems seems really cool, really cool interaction. So lots more to see, of course. But yeah, yeah, carry on. I just thought that was good. Yeah. Worth mentioning. Uh, I'm going to lump the next two cards together before we get to the generic. So we have we have two more cards we, that I'm going to lump together. They're both essentially the same kind of thing. So we have Earth Form and we have Lightning Form, which has freaking gorgeous artwork. Holy holy hell, man. Um, so Earth Form, oh, yeah. Earth Form has like this big grumpy tree man with his arms crossed. Um, <laughs> It's, this is, it's a full rainbow cycle, so it's uh, red, yellow, and blue. The red one is a three drop. Two block, seven attack. So three for seven, which is great. And then it's very simple. When it hits, create an embodiment of Earth. And then we have uh, the yellow is a three for six. And the blue is a three for five. And then we have lightning form, which is kind of like a a scaled differently version. So lightning form is a one for five on hit. Create an embodiment of lightning token. Yellow is a one for four. Create an embodiment of lightning. Yellow, uh, blue is a one for three. So they're they're essentially the same kind of cards. They're just essentially a vanilla card. When it hits, create the token of choice um i really like the earth form a lot because it's a three for seven which is very very strong and then you still get that embodiment yeah. of earth and it's fairly hard to block out the seven attack um the lightning form i don't like quite as much as the one for five but the art is gorgeous it's absolutely gorgeous i think it might be my favorite art in the set uh, people who know me i really like silver haired characters like we mentioned before i really really love this art by edward g very good um so yeah, these oh, are... I want to know. I want to know. I want to know who this Seraphina character is because there's a quote on this one: "To wield lightning is to channel the raw energy of y- of Yuvor or Yivor through your very veins." From Seraphina. Seraphina looks like a lightning wizard character, but a silver-haired lady. Why did we get? Why Why didn't we get her? Why did we get Ocilio? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, You're yeah. not the only one who's disappointed. <laughs> um... uh, outrageous missed opportunity. Yeah, and there's a full art version of this card. I don't think it's on, I don't think it's on February, but there is a full. I mean, if I go to card details, maybe they have the full art version on here. Oh, they do. Oh, but it's not in. It's not on screen. I'll have to change the oh, wow, the, yeah. the regions. Hold on, if I, if I do the. No, that doesn't work. Uh, rainbow extended art. So does that come in the set then? Does it, or is that just a promo or something? It's a promo. The extended art is a is a rainbow foil promo. Ah, uh, I see. Oh, why can I? Yeah. Oh, yes, from the armory armory kit, isn't it? I think the promos for those. I think that's oh, what, what that's Edward Edward she has done a couple other arts in the set in Flesh and Blood, like Fang Strike and stuff. In any case, the card looks absolutely gorgeous, and um, Indeed. you know, here let me go ahead. I'm just gonna for the for the visual people out there, I'm gonna go ahead and paste a duplicate, and then I'm gonna. Just get this so you could so you can see. Just 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 so you can see. Um, hold on. <laughs> Worth checking out the video version and subscribing on the Living Legends podcast. YouTube yeah, channel, yeah exactly. Just moment alone. Uh, reset. Yeah. Uh, it's not working. Okay, whatever. That's fine. Right, so if, you're listening, if you're listening to the audio version of this right now, just you know, while we're in limbo here, just go and subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's that's probably what you should do. Anyway. Oh, there you go. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just I'll just do the manual on this. One. Look look how good this looks. Look at this. This looks, this looks so good. I think it's like one of the best looking flesh flesh and blood cards. <laughs> like the art is just like super extended. It's just really clean looking. It looks it looks incredible. It reminds me of a lot of Japanese trading card games that focus on like the art make make the art really big it looks really good big big fan yeah. of that so yeah that's good i'll have to re-edit this down but that's fine that's fine um cool well let's go back let's go back to the final couple cards 
which are going to be um, some generic. So, as would you like to take it away with the first one? Yeah, sure. So this is uh, so these were all spoiled during the keynote as well, but they were very blurry images, so we didn't get to see them properly. But this first one is a, uh, a hand, uh, sorry, a card called Hand Behind the Pen. Uh, so this is a generic, um, two cost, six attack. So two for six, pretty good. Only blocks for two though on this generic one. But um, all of these have some interactive abilities. So th this one says, when this hits a, a hero, turn a card in their arsenal face up, so you get a bit of information, and then banish a non-attack action card from their arsenal. Um, so you get to see what the card is that they're arsenaling, which can be good in some scenarios. But if it's a non-attack action card, it's just gone. You know, it's like a, a mini a mini C and C almost like something like uh, sort of like wreck havoc used to be used to yeah. turn that face up and if it's a D react destroy it. So it's those sorts of cards which are cool because these these come as a rare cycle and it's a nice little budget alternative for C and Cs. If you don't have them, you can if you're a new player start with cards like this because it's just a two for six that then can have that same effect. It's nice little budget options and stuff that you might want to select and keep yourself open in open with in limited because these are pretty good rates on these cards, um, as we can see in the next one, which I'm sure you're going to read out in a minute. Yeah, cards like this, I just want to mention, really make me feel like Command & Conquer kind of limited their design pretty early on. It's like when James mentioned in the yeah. interview that we had with him that he was he, he regrets um, Sink Below. And because he feels like it, you know, it's too good, it limit, limits their design. I feel like Command & Conquer is very similar, where it's just so good. It just blows up their arsenal no matter what it is, can't be defended, but the d -Rex can't be played, where yeah, these crazy. are, like, so much worse. <laughs> but they're more interesting because they have kind of, like, these different effects, where or CNC is just like, well, I just do it. Um so the next card just, yeah, it's going to be um, before we just go on to these mm -hmm. last ones here as well. Uh, the Living Legends podcast episodes are always long. Um, so we've come to expect that already at this point. Um, yeah, but it will be it will be um, interesting to see in the future, like, you know, what the power nine are of uh, flesh and blood and whether those cards are just banned because they're too good, like Command and Conquer, like the, uh, the, the you know, E strikes and all that sort of stuff. Are they just too good that they just don't? They're not played anymore. Similar to how the Power Nine just are not allowed to be played in the game, especially because uh, Flesh and Blood is an eternal format. The generics are just constantly playable. Art of Wars always playable, ridiculously good, clearly. Yeah. At the moment. So. Yeah. I, that happen. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Hmm. We'll see. It'd be interesting if they did like a big purge and just banned a bunch of stuff like that. I. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but this card, next card, Smash Up, very yep. similar to the last card, uh, different in a couple ways. So this is a one for five, two blocks. So instead of a two for six, this is a one for five. Uh, really cool artwork of like this barbarian riding like this battle elk is the only way I can describe it. Is He's riding like this yeah. mystical elk kind of thing and smashing some dude in armor. Well, a bunch of dudes, it's a bunch of guys in the background being like thrown into the sky. I don't know. Yeah. He, this, this dude's going ham. But uh, also, when this hits a hero, same kind of effect. Uh, turn a card in their arsenal face up, but you banish an attack action card instead. Um, so, mm -hmm. similar kind of deal. I think, it, once again, I think it's two for six, one for five. They're actually pretty close. The seven's where you get the, the those nasty breakpoints, but um, I don't know. It's a rare. Uh, banishing an attack action is also really interesting for this set in particular because it's a wizard runeblade set, so... It's probably not as good as if, like, if this was in heavy hitters, for example, I think this would be like very, very good, like in, lim in limited. But in this set, I don't know. Maybe just it's just okay. But uh... another thing about these as well is, um, especially in the context of limited, is that your I imagine, yeah, well, the, the meld cards will count as either one. So I think if so. you've got instant yeah. on one side and then non attack on the other side. These might actually hit quite often in limited because there's a lot of split cards. So if you've got a split card in your arsenal, which are normally going to be quite good arsenal targets anyway, because you can play them out at instant speed, they might not block or whatever. Some of these cards might actually hit a lot of the time and banish those cards because of the fact that they have dual purpose. Um, so going into the next one, this one says uh, tongue tied. This has got sick artwork on it as well, like this like weird sort of demon wood 
thing being uh, yeah. being having its tongue tied quite literally by this this banner. Um, so um, yeah, this is a three for seven blocks for two generic again. When this hits, turn a, uh, a card in their arsenal face up, then banish an instant from their arsenal. So we know there's going to be a lot of instants in this set on the dual cards like shock and life. Um, yeah. so this one could actually be pretty good with the break point of seven. Also, I very very much like this one. This is my favorite one of the cycle. Um, hitting an instant is is interesting because if it's a zero card, if if they can play the instant, they can always just play it. In response, you know, they can just. Yeah, true. But if they can't play it, if they if, if they don't have the resources for it, then you know, then it's like stuck. But a three for seven, pardon me, in limited is just insane. In uh, Mistvale draft and sealed, I always play the three for sevens, so the Blanches and the 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 Battlefront Bastion. In fact, one of my That's Zen fine. decks that I went like, I think I went three and one in one of the um, one of the the side events at, in Japan. I literally had like five of these three for sevens i think i had like two blanches and three battlefront bastions and i was just like and then a bunch of the zero for four so i'm just like they're just good three for seven so like even without the effect i think this is a great card in limited with the effect i think this is a very very good card in limited uh this one and like draft is one that i would likely pick very highly because it keeps you open and it's a three for seven that probably also punishes a lot of greedy arsenals so good i think exactly. it's really good yeah yeah. Um, yeah yeah and i think you'll be surprised as to how many times you actually get that off because of the fact there's dual cards in the set um so you have to be careful as well like if you know these cards are floating around you know if you're if you're hiding something in your arsenal which might actually synergize better on a bigger turn or something you know that you could get smashed up or tongue-tied or hand behind the pen because you know you're keeping that dual card in your arsenal so yeah, it's pretty cool. And they're just big generic attacks, like you said, which have good rates on them. So if they blocked for three, they would be ridiculous, but it's, it's a good thing that they don't, I think. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, good good stuff. Um, good stuff. Uh, I'm I now taking a look at the only card we didn't talk about, which was the Channel of the Millennium Tree, and to see if it has any extra things to talk about. I don't really think so. This is um, one that just kind of pumps up arcane damage, right? It says at the beginning... When this enters your arena at the beginning of your action phase, you amp three. Um, mm -hmm. So this just kind of like pumps up their first arcane damage spell by like four or arcane damage dealing thing by four. This one's an earth action aura. Um, yeah. So it's pretty oh. good. Pretty good in the context of uh, now we know what Verdance does. If you've got Channel Millennium Tree out and you gain one life, you're dealing four damage on the on the on her effect, which is yep. pretty good. And then, um, so you can turn you can turn a sigil of solace into seven value if you've got this out. You can gain three life and deal four damage, which for zero is is is, is pretty good. Um, plus whatever you do after that, um, without the amp is just yeah. You just you love in life if you've got eight cards in your banish zone. You got channel millennium tree out. That's for sure. Yeah, in your, in your earth cards in your graveyard, I should say. No, yeah. in your banish is your banish zone. Yes. Oh, her, okay. So yeah, banished yeah. your your banished zone for Verdance. Is that the same with Florian then? Oh yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. So so w w when I was talking about the felling of the crown, it's not anti synergistic whatsoever. You do want to banish cards. Yeah, you want to banish two Earth cards to do the thing. Oh so yes. It's, it's, yes. Yeah. So I, I thought it was graveyard, but it's not. It's um, it's banishing from your it's, it's banished zone that cares about that so yeah maybe that what when go going back on what we said earlier maybe there's cards like if you want to self mill or you know put cards into your banish zone that's where the decompose is going to come in so that's probably what this is getting at so uh so yeah before you correct me in the comments if you listen this far i do correct myself so have that <laughs> yeah yeah if if you're listening in like almost two hours two hours in we we did it. We got there. Yeah, um, I reckon the people that subscribe to the Living Legends podcast on YouTube, they're the ones that listen to this to the very end, for sure, hundred uh, percent. Yeah. That could be you. All you have to do is go over to YouTube and click subscribe. That's it, really. It is. Like I said, help us speed run to uh, one thousand subscribers. You can only be one of the first one thousand subscribers once. So now is your opportunity. You have the you have the chance. Um, yeah. Help us. Help us. I know we can, I mean, I think we can get much, much, much higher than that. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's do it and uh, help support the Living Legends. Hey, maybe LSS will, will give 
the Living Legends podcast its own spoiler card. Um, each of us, each of us yeah. has gotten our, our spoiler cards respectively. Spike Feeders, Go Again Gaming, Red Zone Rogue. We've each gotten our spoiler cards respectively, but maybe someday they'll give the Living Legends its own card and then we can talk about it in an episode. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? So go subscribe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah the Living Legends podcast round the table product that's coming out um, next year. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, no, though, okay, okay. As, as we kind of wind things down, I do want to mention something. So we, we looked at, I just, I just realized this, we looked at the um, product schedule for the next uh, year or so, right? One thing that was not on that was round the table. And in our interview with James White, he said a round the table product is in the works. Um, and it was like he was they were like working on it. So very interesting. I don't know if that means they are not going to release it and for for uh, over a year or if it's one of those things that they want to keep very hush hush and make it a big surprise. Um, I think either options are, are possible, but um, yeah. Yeah, what uh, what we should say on that as well, though, is that the product roadmap for for their sort of financial year is from August to July. That's um, true. So yeah, so 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 we may see the round the table at the latter end of next year, um, potentially, uh, because we still got sort of you know August, September, October, November, December that's not appeared on this roadmap, but that's yeah. part of their next year. I actually think I th I think uh, round the table could be a really good holiday product, to be honest, um, like a holiday yeah. season product. I think multiplayer stuff like that's really good around that time of year because it's a lot of the time oh, of definitely. the year where people are getting together and you know it's a good thing you can like bust out if you have like family or friends over. So, yeah, yeah, um, and, uh, yeah. That's gonna do it for the main topic uh, and all the flesh and blood stuff for this episode. We do have our arsenal step, dear viewers. So definitely. Stick around and listen to whatever we got up our arsenals uh, this week. Um, mm -hmm. And I have, a, I have a quick one. So I have a bunch of card game stuff. I'm not going to talk about the card game stuff this time. I'm going to talk about something just really, really quickly. It's something I do every single year. And it felt like now is the time of year that I'm getting. I'm going to do it again. So um, I'm a big fan. This is it has to do with video games. It's very nerdy stuff. So um I'm a big fan of the Uncharted series. It's not something I talk about a lot, but I actually really, really love Uncharted. Um, and oh, yeah. I, I play through the whole series every year. And I just kind of like get into this mood where I'm like, I want to go on like this adventure. Right. And, you know, they're always like, you know, exploring lost. All of them are about like there's always like some sort of lost city, some sort of mystical artifact, some sort of uh, legendary explorer that they're following, whether it be. Francis Drake or Marco Polo or whatever, whether the city is uh, Shambhala or El Dorado or whatever. And I love this kind of thing. I love these kind of like adventures, Indiana Jones-esque style stuff. So I'm playing through Uncharted again this year uh, right now. And it's really fun, except oh. for Uncharted 1. Uncharted 1 is the worst by far. And I always sometimes I skip it. This time I didn't skip it. I still play through Uncharted 1. But going from Uncharted 1 to Uncharted 2 is like day and night. Two is like so much better. Like that, yeah. And then like three is pretty good. Four is the best. And then I, I also play the uh, one with Chloe. I play Lost Legacy, which I think is really good, too. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now in my in my kind of spare time outside of like content and TCGs. I'm just kind of like firing up some Uncharted currently in Uncharted 2. And it's really good. So, yeah, that's my, nice. that's my arsenal set. <laughs> you got anything else? Awesome stuff. Um, I'm just just checking that you can still hear me because it's it skipped a little bit there. No, you're good. Oh, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah, I was just checking because the video went a little bit blurry, uh, and we had some internet issues last week. But yes, uh, everything is all good. Uh, Arsenal step. Um, I watched Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh, last cool. Weekend. Robin uh, and I are gonna on Thursday. We're gonna go see it. We haven't seen it yet. I heard it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's um, definitely a fan service film. So if you've seen a lot of the um, other sort of comic book movies and, you know, you're up to date with a lot of the a lot of the stuff, new and old, you'll be very, very happy with some of the stuff that's okay. in it. Um, but yeah, it was, um, yeah, it's uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Really, really funny. And just exactly what you expect from a Deadpool film, but just with Hugh Jackman in it as well, which is good. Um, we are so, almost, uh, almost up to date. I think I've seen all of the Marvel movies, most of the shows, 
But there's a couple movies that I haven't seen because I heard they were bad and I just didn't want to spend the time. So I I didn't see Madam Web. Robin saw it. She thought it was bad. Um, and then I, I never saw the Black Widow movie and I never saw... Well, there, there might have been another new one that came out that I didn't watch. But I've watched most of... Like all the others. i watched all the others. Um, yeah, so... so yeah, so I don't want to I don't want to reveal too much, but um, yeah, if you've been following stuff for a while, you'll you'll definitely you'll definitely you'll definitely be uh, definitely be you know surprised as to what's in it. Um, but um, but yeah, so yeah, watch that. Um, anything else? Not really, to be honest. Playing through Final Fantasy Ten again at the moment, but um, apart from that, not really doing much. Nice. Much else. So yeah, that's it really. Nice. Well. That is that, and of course, uh, Bill is out uh, bouldering up a storm, bringing home the gold medal to the Living Legends podcast. Hopefully, we'll see. Um, we'll have to question him next next week. And uh, until then, thank you so much, everyone, for watching, for listening, for going to the Living Legends YouTube channel and subscribing. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I've been Kel, also known as Red Zone Rogue. You can find me everywhere at red zone rogue and of course we have as where can the lovely people find you man yeah so uh, i'm going in gaming on youtube um and uh yeah i'm going in gaming az on the socials twitter mainly but um yeah if you're watching this on living legends podcast make sure you uh, subscribe there as well and uh go and check out everybody else's stuff and what everyone else is up to as well here but um yeah we'll welcome bill back next week and see if he won the thing that he was doing, we'll see. <laughs> right. Yep. Yep. You missed a good, good, good old fashioned two hour episode. So thank you again for uh, watching. If you're listening to this audio, you've been, you've been watching for two hours, presumably bless you. Uh, we appreciate you and um, we'll see you next week. All right. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you. And uh, also if we're still recording, mm. uh, leave a comment. On the oh, video yeah. as well because we'll read them out we'll read do them it. out um uh, we'll, we'll we'll see how long we do it for i want to try and try and read out you know as much as much as possible or at least shout some names out for you know the, our beginning of our migration over to a separate youtube channel but yeah continue to comment and we'll continue to shout you out for the foreseeable future until we decide not to that's it really <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we'll probably we, we thought about introducing kind of like a mailbag thing so we'll 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 revisit that going forward so uh yeah. just just do it do it do it okay bye do it now <laughs> do it do it now now do it now get to the youtube channel get to the you get to the youtube chat i can't do it i can't do youtube <laughs> youtube i can't do it it's a weird weird like inflection i can just go blah. Get to the youtube <laughs> yeah to the chopper. Brilliant. All right. To YouTube. All right, we're done. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna leave that in too. Keep the old end. Yeah, man. Man. Yeah.